Hello, I'm Jared. And I'm Ebony, and this is his... And hers, Warhammer 40K. 40K. Yay. Yay. We're back. We're back. And today we are discussing a uh, Primark novel. Yeah. Conrad Kurz by dun, dun, dun. Guy Haley. Yep. Um, it is one that I read a while back. Uh, so for me, it's mostly hazy memories. Um, but I'll try and be as insightful as I can, uh, I have sharp despite memories. not having much memory about this book. I have sharp memories, but I don't know if I have opinions that you'll agree with. <laughs> I have some yeah, okay. concerns, but I enjoyed it. I would give this book, I would give it an 8 out of 10. I think that's what I remember giving it. Okay. Okay. I tried to start putting together reviews of, yeah. or like review scores. Okay. Yeah. I think that was somewhere. Starting what I had. in the beginning, eight out of ten for both of us. Sure. So, do you want me to say what I liked about it, or do you want to say what you liked about it before I start with problems? I mean, what I liked about it was the whole insight into Conrad Kurz as a character. I think we never really get into his head that much okay. in, in a lot of the other portrayals. It's a bit like he's often portrayed as um, a combination of batman slash joker uh-huh. um, I see that. throughout a lot of the other horus heresy series and throughout a, lo- a lot of other characterization of him but in this one it was nice to uh get his his perspective on a lot of things or at least the way he views the emperor the imperium his legion you know all things that he had he's pretty opinionated on um, and so I, that was my favorite part. For okay. Me. So what I knew about Conrad Kurz and the Night Lords going into this book, so I've read the Night Lords trilogy, but mm. there's not so much Conrad Kurz in it. It's just a general sort of the miasma of, of Night Lords culture, which I like. Um, so I knew he was spoopy. I knew he destroyed his own homeworld. Um, and I think I knew that he was killed by an assassin. Okay. So that's all I knew about it. And my, I will start off with saying I love the writing. It just, it felt like the author was just enjoying their time in Spooky Town. Like it was beautifully written and gross and scary and I loved it. But I, I feel like my major complaint is I don't think that it told me a story that had a conclusion. Like it just was Conrad Kurz and his thoughts yeah. And then... I don't have a problem with that. Like, the Primark novels... I, I wanted d- something to happen. We know... We saw what happened. Like, it was his escape. So, the book takes place basically after Ruinstorm. Mm-hmm. Um, Ruinstorm, I don't remember which number book that is, is the last time we really see Conrad Kurz in the Horus Heresy. The Night Lords are still present in mm-hmm. various ways, but... The prime arc is out of the picture yeah. for the rest of the story. Um, this is a continuation of that with some flashbacks to Great Crusade era curves, mm-hmm. both on uh, Nostromo and after he's taken control of the Legion mm-hmm. and after he starts recruiting from Nostromo mm-hmm. and how that happens. Yeah, so it picks back up with sort of Sanguinius has trapped in a coffin and shot that coffin into space. Yes. Um, and a, like, salvage ship picks up that coffin. They don't know what it is, but it looks expensive. It's got fancy technology, and they're like, great, we can't wait to sell this to whoever we're going to sell it to. I actually read this one a 9.5. Oh, look at you. We're going to sell this to whoever we're going to sell it to, and then they crack open that coffin, and obviously Conrad Kurz comes out of it, and chaos ensues, and everything goes really poorly for everyone on that ship, including... You know, the Night Lord's chaos does not ensue. I guess, fine. Ha. (laughs) You made it funny. Yes. Um, So Conrad Kurz pops out, murders everyone on that ship, except for a dude named Elver, who's like a junior officer in training like he wants to run his own salvage ship one day um and conrad kurz for reasons unknown because he's capable of flying ships requires elver elver to fly this ship i don't think he is capable of continuously flying a ship Uh, 
not because he physically couldn't, but because he's but crazy. Because he's crazy. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Well, fair. That's fair. He's a full-on crazy person. He makes Elver fly the ship and also occasionally tortures him. My favorite part was when he made a random parade of crucified tiny it's mice. It's the best. It's it's yes, he great. Co- he covers the floor in crucified mice. Yeah, it, that is gold. Like he finds every mouse on that ship and I like think. crucifies them with tiny little toothpicks. Yeah, yes. but like he has this sort of weird friendship with Elver, where Elver is like sometimes this dude talks and he's legitimately a Primarch. Like it's a, an ag- it's a, an aggressive friendship. Yeah, like a godlike being, and I'm odd. And then also he peeled all the skin off of my arm before he cut it off, and that was unfortunate. So there's a lot of that between him and Elver, but he gets him there to Sagwalasalasa, uh, Sagalsa. Someone on the internet's gonna tell us how to say that. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's Sagwalsa. That's but not I've always better. referred to it as Sagwalasa. Like I don't know. Okay, it, it, whatever. It, it is. <laughs> there's so, a lot of silent like. So we know this location as the place where the Night Lord's Legion finally broke. Yes. Um, it is a location that during the scouring, which we'll eventually get to, but mm-hmm. we've seen this in the Night Lord's trilogy already, um, where all of the sort of second founding ultramarine successors get together and just push back against the Night Lords yeah. and force those that are remaining uh, into either scattered war bands or mm-hmm. into the Eye of Terror. Yeah, which I think of it kind of as Night Lord's home base. Yeah. yeah. So they. Elver gets, which was really sad. And I guess that was a little bit of a story arc on Elver's behalf. Like, he finally gets him there. He kind of thinks that they're sort of friends, even though he's missing an eyeball and an arm. Um, Like, he gets him there. He's flown this ship. um, And when Kurz lands, Night Lords start appearing. And they have this conversation about what he wants to do, which is, you know, build this empire etc etc but they're they're like by the way what do we do with this dude and he's like oh i don't care kill him and that's the last time we ever hear from elver which was sad um but i enjoyed that arc it was expected yes it wasn't it was not unexpected for conrad curse Mm. yeah so then the sort of parallel that we're getting happening um is that on nostromo the as it became settled um by the emperor like they had removed all sort of criminal activity by terrible means which we get some flashbacks of his name um scravok yes so so you did not read pharos i haven't so pharos is a horse heresy book that guy haley wrote Mm -hmm. that heavily features um gendor scravok if gendor scravok leading a force of night lords Mm -hmm. to sotha Okay, um, which sounds familiar to me. It, that is where the Pharos device was. Oh, okay. So you know the Pharos device because you read Unremembered Empire okay. and in Ruin Storm, yep. I think it was mentioned. Yeah. The book Pharos is how it ends up destroyed. Okay. Um, Gandor Scravok leads that force. Um, the funny thing, looking back on it, mm-hmm. is in that book, one of the big uh, critiques about Pharos is the Night Lords in it seem laughably incompetent. Hmm. And that a force of about 10,000 Night Lords just barely beats about 50 Imperial Fists. Yeah, that seems bad. Except this book explains explains it. Yeah, so everything was all good on Nostromo when they were sort of settled and part of the Imperium and paying their tithes. And they had made a planetary government that worked within the Imperial system, except... All of the crime bosses were like, yeah, so the Night Hunter left with his legion and we're not about this law and order. And so they have a coup and they murder the sort of ruling body that was left in place. And and Nostromo becomes ruled by a bunch of crime lords, like a conclave of coincidentally that conclave of crime lords is led by a cousin of Skravok. Yeah, also named Skravok. It's a family name. Yeah. Um, And... They decide that, like, yeah, we're going to pay our tithes and, yeah, we're going to send, you know, aspirants to become night lords, except we're going to send them from the prisons and we're going to give them the worst of the worst, which Gendor Skravok. Now, the worst of the worst, though, I think needs a, just a little more detail. Yeah, it's not worse good. It's, it's worse bad. Yeah, it, it's like, oh, these these are the, the killers and the murderers. It's like, no, these are like 
the shitty pickpockets. Yeah, who got arrested. The, like, mentally unstable who aren't actually capable of anything. Yeah, it's the bad criminals. Um, And so on the receiving end of these terrible dudes to become night lords is Gendor Skravak. And he has a, another night lord with him who's like, this is a bad idea and don't do this. Yeah. So yeah. So once these recruits actually started to show up at the Legion, every, like, People are they like, were what? terrible. Yeah. And everyone could see that. Yeah. Except Gendar Skravak's like, yeah, let's turn these murderers into night lords. It'll be great. Well, and be- everyone's like, ugh. Because he basically took them as his own personal yes. force and say, they are going to be loyal to me mm-hmm. and not to Kurs. Yeah. And so... Things are going awry with Night Lords, um, and things are going awry on Nostromo. Um, and then back in real time, Kurz is telling you all of his feels about these things and how they happened, but he's telling them to you to a meat puppet of the yeah, Emperor so the, that he made out of dead people. So the so Kurz in Full crazy in a interesting bit of irony has made a shrine to the Emperor. And if you know what happens generally post heresy with pe- pe- with true religious people who make shrines to the emperor, they can hear the emperor. It is an actual like warp effect. Mm-hmm. You know, faith is a real thing in 40k, and I personally believe that the emperor at this point could use that Meet shrine. Something? to speak to him. Mm, I'm going to disagree with you there. Okay. We'll just, we'll agree to disagree. Yeah. So he also is well aware that he's going to be killed. Um, And so now he has this sort of legion of terribly incompetent, mean night lords and also a world that has fallen to complete crime. Um, And so he decides that it's time to like, enforce justice and destroy Nostromo and he and he does that with his legion and there is a little back and forth between members of the legion and members of the legion with different levels of loyalty to Kurs about what they should and shouldn't do so there is some detail about this in this book that really comes to a head um during the Thramus crusade Mm. uh, which is not directly detailed in this book but in I want to say it's uh, the Forge World Black Book Crusade, mm. where it's the Night Lords against the Dark Angels primarily. Mm. There is sort of an internal civil war okay. between the early Nostromen recruits okay. who were recruited while Curse was still there, mm-hmm. and then those that came later. Gotcha. Yeah, and so there's it's Sevatar and Shen, or yeah, Sh- yeah. Or Shang, it could be Shang. It's Sevatar, um, and then another Night Lord who has who is very loyal to Kurz and has been doing all the things that Kurz says. Has seen him having his visions and like sort of meltdowns and been kind of holding that in. They also they have been having this sort of internal discussion amongst the like leaders of the Night Lords chapters about murders that are happening to humans on Night Lordships because they're all crazy. Um, it turns out some of those murders might have been Conrad Kurz because that's how he built his corpse emperor. Um, but we get this really interesting dichotomy where like Sevatar and Chang come head to head at the end. Like Conrad Kurz is like, we are going to Nostromo and we're going to destroy it and that'll be the end of it. Everyone on Nostromo needs to be punished. Um, and Sevatar is full gung-ho about it. He's like, Kurz says we're destroying it. It's the right thing. Yep. Let's do it. And Shang is like, uh, I love him and I, I am really loyal, but maybe he's crazy. Have you noticed that he's crazy? Um, and, and they have this headbutt moment, but Sevatar goes off and, and does it. And then and I don't know what happens to Shang. So... The fallout of this is Kurz tries, like, Kurz is brought up on charges, essentially, Mm -hmm. by the Imperium Mm -hmm. and tries to get brought in by, I believe it's Dorn and Vulcan. Mm -hmm. Um, He escapes into, like, the dark of the galaxy, like, between stars, and doesn't show up again until Isvan 5. Ah, Like, that is... The last, that is the next time anyone in the Imperium sees the Night Lords. Okay. 
Well, that explains some things. Yeah. Yeah. And so they destroy Nostromo. You don't really get to see it in this book. I wish you did, but you said that's because you get to see it other places. The destruction of Nostromo has been a detail before. Like, yeah. it, it, it's an exterminatus. Yeah. So it's like, very like, and we destroyed it. And then Conrad Kurz is on his way to being assassinated. And there's a little bit of conversation between him and other Night Lords about why he shouldn't go and why he should resist it. But he's all blah, blah, blah. This is fate. And so he goes. And that is the end of the book. And I honestly, I went back and read the whole last chapter again. I was like, did yeah, I miss it, something? Honestly, it just felt so go abrupt. Back, go back and read soul hunter okay i think okay whatever the first night lord's, night lord's book, book is, is okay because the continuation of that mm -hmm. is in that book okay like it's in a flashback okay but exactly what, what happens, happens is a after those doors close yeah it felt so abrupt and i was like how is this the end of this book and so i guess my complaint and where we disagree is that you're saying that all of these things that i think needed to be in this story exist somewhere else which yes. is just makes me kind of feel like why did we make this book if because all the important things have already been done every primarch needed a book and not all of the important details have been done I but guess. just that particular event has been done but we didn't know the before of it okay fine yeah it just felt kind of like it just let me down at the end because i was like oh this is the thing that he's been you know like seeing and imagining and we don't get to see it happen. I knew, I knew that it happened, but I just thought at least you would get a little bit of it. I don't know. That just made me like yeah, me. That's, that's been seen before the actual assassination. I'm fine with it happening. I think the, the annoying thing is it is named after a scene from apocalypse now. Uh. So, Conrad Kurz mm -hmm. is named after a character mm -hmm. from the, the movie slash book mm -hmm. and is killed by an assassin named M. Shen, mm -hmm. which is a shortening of, what's the actor's name? I don't name? remember that name, but yes. Martin Sheen. Martin Sheen, yeah. Yeah, um, whose character kills yeah. Kurtz in the movie. Yeah. And that, to me, always felt like... It's too on the nose. Yeah, but that's... Yeah. It's, it's old lore, okay. yeah. so I'm not too bothered. I by didn't it. hate it. I still give this book an eight. I give it an eight out of ten for all of those scenes on board that ship with Elver. Like all of that is great, and also like a little bit of the flashback to Kurz as what the night hunter his, on Nostromo. What about his fortress of agony? That's yeah. made from people. It was all right. Oh, come it was on. a little bit too much, even for me. Um, yeah, I just, I don't know. I just want... Everyone needs a wall in their house made of people. I just wanted like a little bit more story, but like just the ambiance of reading it, it was great. It was my favorite thing to do before I fell asleep. Read about tiny crucified mice and humans in torture. It was great for me. I you, just... Uh, you going to give it a shot at work? <laughs> yeah. No, no, that's not allowed at work. Aww. Um, but like, yeah, I just felt story wise, it was it was lacking, and I disagree that he was talking to the emperor. But I do appreciate that that's a thing that happens, and it could be the true. The shrine was glowing. Yeah, I just think that was all in his mind because he's a crazy. Aww. Like, I just think he was full on crazy, and the emperor was not talking to him. And also, why would the emperor talk to him? Because he can. Yeah, but why? I, I f he's still like Kurz is still one of his sons. Yeah, but I feel like he's like, yep, nope, this isn't gonna end well. Let's just. I don't. He do that. That is not what the emperor ever does. I... Like the emperor doesn't ever cut his losses. Mm, I don't know. I don't think that he was talking back to him. I think Conrad Kurz might have schizophrenia. <laughs> I don't think so. Not not in that moment. Not with the shrine there to act as an actual focus for the emperor. I mean, maybe, but I just, I don't think so. I do not. I disagree. I just don't think that's true. It could be true. I could be wrong. I didn't write this book. But like, mm -mm. I think he's just fully flawed. Like he is insane. Full stop. That doesn't make it any less riveting or terrifying. Yeah. 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 I think I've mentioned this before, but there's a theory that had they met sooner, mm -hmm. Sanguinius would have been able to help Kurz control his prophetic visions. That is possible. They they have very similar personalities. Like, I I just read Bruin Storm because I missed that, so I got pre-Siege Sanguinius. And yeah, it was... 
he's like a little bit crazy and a lot whiny. And that is definitely true of Conrad Kurz. It's just that like he maybe wrangles it better and he definitely does a better job of projecting competent leadership Mm. into the world around him where as Conrad Kurz projects crazy into the world around him. So like, yeah, I could see that. They are sort of mirror verse versions of each other. I could buy that. Gotcha. Yeah, but no, I loved it. And it definitely, of Primark novels that I read, it's up there. Doesn't yeah. doesn't beat Alpharius. Doesn't but it's beat Alpharius? <laughs> yeah, Alpharius was great. Okay. Um, but yeah, no, I liked it. And I would read more things about Conrad Kurz. I don't know what else there is. I don't is. think there are more things about Conrad Kurz. Um, if I had written are, a Primark book actually, about him. there are a few short stories. Like, okay. you can read Lightning Tower. Okay. Which is about when he was first found and how he confessed that he was having these visions Mm -hmm. to Fulgrim Mm -hmm. um, and Fulgrim told Dorne and Mm. Dorne's not about that. No. So it's the conflict between Dorne and Kurz. Okay. Um, There's Lightning Tower. There's... You read Sevatar's Mm -hmm. story. There is... I think it's called Lord of Night, Mm -hmm. which is an older... Uh, Night Lord's book like it predates all of them okay and I believe is Shang the main character oh that would be interesting I Mm. hated him throughout most of this book and agreed with Sevatar that he was kind of a sniveling ass kissy butt munch but I don't think it's Shang he was he was responsible at the end so there's another one Sahal yeah I feel like I've heard that name yeah, no, like, I just think if I had written a book about Conrad Kurz, knowing that all of those other bits of the lore existed, I would have chosen a different part of his life. Like, when he went into a hole in the universe, who knows what's happening in there? Like, I just would have told a different story. Mm. You know, I just think that would have been more worthwhile as a reader. Gotcha. No, I don't know. What are we back with next time? Um, I'm not quite sure mm. let me see what is on the, the docket list. what is on the list yes <laughs> we're reading lots of things but they're not things that yeah there's some other stuff so like i've been going through a necromunda anthology mm-hmm. called status dead zone and i'm some reading dragon fells you're reading dragon fells we've been going through dark harvest dark harvest are both warhammer horrors but like um, age of sigmar horrors yep. yeah so the next Dawn of Fire, I'm about Martyr's that. Tomb, yeah. apparently there's a novel that takes place in between them called Void King. Okay. So that's one option. I would do that. The other one is we can read Harrowmaster, mm. which is the mod- M41 Alpha Legion book yeah. by Mike Brooks, same okay. guy who did Alpharius. Okay. Or... Da, 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 da. What else is on this list? There's Rogel Dorn. Mm-hmm. There's Sanguinius. Mm. I don't know if I'm ready for more Sanguinius. There's Luther. Mm. Um, um eh, about Dark Angels. There's Brutal Cunning. You know I don't like the orcs. I know. <laughs> um, yeah, maybe Harrowmaster or the book in between this Dawn of Fire book. Probably both of them, honestly. Yeah. Bef- yeah. Between we got a lot of time Fine. between the end and the death part too. That is true. Yeah. Yep. End of the death part two. Uh, November, I believe. I also, uh, to date this, it was just announced End in the Death Part Three. And I'm super excited. It's been written. That is not the reaction I expected from you. So, like, yes, I want Horus versus the Emperor, but every siege book that I read, I like a little bit better than the last one. And now it's very like I, I'm enjoying this and I don't want it to okay. end, you know? Yeah. That is the opposite of what many people's reaction has been, but okay, I interesting. I like them more the more I read them. Yeah. yeah. And like, I really liked the end in the death part one. You liked Mortis more than Saturnine? Okay, not that one. But, <laughs> but for the other ones. But like, like I like Echoes of Eternity more, more than... Warhawk? Warhawk, yeah. Oh, I didn't. No? No. Okay. Definitely not. Well, we'll see how it goes at the end of the death part, too. Yeah. And we'll be back soon with a surprise. With a surprise, yep. Bye. Bye, everyone.